Hey, so last Saturday here on the channel, I did a stream, and I want to thank you guys who popped up for the stream, and if you didn't, it should still be available so you can watch it. And I was discussing the manga chapter, the last one that just came out, chapter 74, and I was also discussing the movie. The problem was I didn't have enough time to cover everything I wanted to cover, and I realized after I closed the stream, I'm like, oh, forgot to talk about that, and should have gone into more detail on that. Um, and so I'm doing this little bonus video for y'all to kind of go into one last thing I wanted to talk about when it came to this manga chapter, chapter 74, uh, having to do with Vegeta's character. I want to discuss Vegeta's character in Super. I've seen a lot of Dragon Ball fans and ones that are pretty smart too. This is not a, a negative opinion or anything like that, but I've seen people say that Vegeta does not have a lot of, you know, character development or that he regressed in Super. Now, granted, there were moments in the moral arc that Vegeta did questionable things, and there were moments that he, that Vegeta didn't evolve. But if you watch all of Super, like the anime and the manga, Vegeta really did change. Like Vegeta and Super is very different than Vegeta and Z. And the reason why chapter 74 of the manga was so effective is because he went back to a degree, went back to the old Vegeta. But there is the clear evolution of his character here. Not just the fact that he's able to tap into a God of Destruction power, but also I want to spotlight a couple of the things he told Granola during their fight. And I discussed this a little bit in the, my review for this manga chapter, but I wanted to really go a bit more in depth on Vegeta's change as a, as a person from all the way back when we first met him back in Dragon Ball Z or the Z era of the manga. So specifically, I want to highlight this line right here on your screen right now. He's talking to Granola, they're fighting. And Granola's bragging about being the strongest in everything he did, right? Which is the wishes. And Vegeta says, strongest, second strongest rankings are well and good, but they only reflect a moment in time. Once that moment is passed, it's nothing but history. That right there shows a real change in Vegeta from who he used to be back in Z. Because if you remember, back in Dragon Ball Z and throughout most of that series, Vegeta was trying to catch up to Goku. And there were times in the series where he did catch up to Goku. I did a whole video discussing every time Vegeta surpassed Goku. And he did it twice in the Cell Saga. If you count the Android and Cell Sagas as one arc, did it twice there. But by the time we got to the Boo Saga and Goku tapped into Super Saiyan 3, like at that point, it was off to the races, right? Vegeta couldn't catch up until we got to Super. And Vegeta was able to at least be relatively as strong as Goku when he tapped into Super Saiyan Blue and Resurrection F. It was always about Vegeta surpassing Goku. And then at the end of the, of the Buu saga, when they fought Kid Buu, Vegeta says, you know, you are number one. And people totally misinterpret that scene because it's not that Vegeta was saying, I'm not going to stop or I'm going to stop being the strongest. I'm not going to be who I am. It's that he was admitting that no matter how hard he tried... Goku always had one step up on him in spite of being a low-class warrior, in spite of Vegeta being an elite and Goku being, you know, essentially a pauper, a low-class warrior. Goku, through hard work, was able to overcome that and through being a smart fighter. And I really love that aspect of Vegeta's character. That, that was his arc and Z. But I love the fact that here he tells Granola, like he's telling Granola, he's like, okay, yeah, you might be the strongest today, but who's going to be the strongest tomorrow? Because the way that it works in this world, it's almost like Vegeta was kind of talking to Granola as if he's a new character in the world of Dragon Ball. It's very meta. It's almost like Granola was new. And he is new to the Dragon Ball world, but it's almost like he's giving him a crash course on how things work around here. Because if you go back throughout the entirety of Dragon Ball from beginning to end, this type of stuff happens all the time. At one point, Roshi's the strongest character that we know of. And then we have people like Tao and Demon King Piccolo. Then we meet Vegeta and Nappa. And, but Goku had Kaioken. So Goku was able to overcome Vegeta until Vegeta went grade 8. Then in the Frieza saga, we have Frieza, this unbeatable space tyrant. Then we have Cell and Boo and so on and so forth. But during those times, it was always Vegeta and Goku kind of going neck and neck. And at one time, Gohan overcame all of them in the Cell Saga. So even if Vegeta and Goku are the strongest for a time, or even if Granola or even Broly or whomever they're facing off against, whatever the villain's going to be in this new movie, maybe he'll overcome even that. 
who knows? We have we have no idea about that yet. But like, I wanted to spotlight this line because he's basically telling Granola like, you know, and right here it says, "Take me for instance. I'm already stronger than I was a few minutes ago." So. The only other guy we've seen do something like that was was Broly, where he got stronger as they fought. But remember, in Battle of Gods, when Bulma got slapped, Vegeta had this rage boost, which he had not had before. We didn't really see Vegeta have a true rage boost, although you could make an argument. If you go back, go all the way back and rewatch Dragon Ball Z Episode 1, I think it's 189 when Trunks gets killed by Perfect Cell. Vegeta snaps and fires a bunch of key blasts on him. You could actually say Vegeta had a boost there. Or he was just letting it all out. They didn't actually state that, but you could make the argument. And I wouldn't really fight you on that. Because it, it, maybe he did. But now he's basically saying that at any point, we can overcome you. Yeah, you might be the strongest, but at any point you can be beaten. And I love that because it shows that even though he acknowledged that Goku was number one, he acknowledged that Goku in Dragon Ball Z had overcome him in every possible way as far as a fighter goes. Vegeta, and remember, in Resurrection, remember what he told Frieza? He told Frieza, he says, I need Goku to live because I need him to be my measuring stick. He didn't use those words, but he basically was saying, I need Goku to be the, the guy who makes me better. You know, and so in some ways, Granola is the guy who makes Vegeta and Goku better. Leave a like, by the way, down below. Don't feel free to leave a like, leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. But I really wanted to point that out because I don't remember there being a time in the series that Vegeta said something quite like this. Like he said things similarly, but for him to just outright tell Granola, like, yeah, sure, you're strong, but I'm catching up pretty quick i like that and it's something that i think shows an evolution in vegeta's character i think it shows that this is not the same vegeta from z and i'm really curious to see where we go in the next chapter because this god of destruction power as you see on your screen right now vegeta has he you know he even refers that it comes from instinct and i've seen some of you guys refer to this as like primal instinct and that would be a great name for this form like, if they're going to call it Primal Instinct, that's pretty cool. But I'm wondering if Vegeta will be unrestricted now and if Vegeta is going to really show Granola that, look, like, yeah, you became the strongest, but look how fast I can catch up to you because it'll be interesting to see if Vegeta in this form can actually boost his power up to fight Granola again. We'll find out next chapter. Hopefully, we'll get a name for this thing and so on and so forth. But uh, anyways, let me leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this whole thing about Vegeta's character evolution in Super in uh, the manga. Super's not the best. It's got a lot of problems. But Vegeta's been one of the better sides of it for the most part. They've botched with him a few times. But for the most part, he's been written, I think, better than I expected. Talk to you soon.